Welcome to Tales of Ted DeGrazia, a Big Blend radio podcast covering the art, life, and career of Southwest artist Ted DeGrazia, as well as the current events and exhibits happening at DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun. It's a 10-acre National Historic Landmark located in Tucson, Arizona. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode about Tales of Ted DeGrazia, the famous Southwestern artist, also known as one of the most reproduced artists in the world. And of course, it is a for Sunday, so we get to chat with Lance Labor, the executive director of DeGrazia Gallery in the Sun in Tucson. And today we're going to talk about the spiritual side of Ted DeGrazia. He has his own mission on the property of the gallery, and the gallery is we always talk about is a 10 acre historic landmark. It's the foothills of the Santa Catalina mountains. Um, it's beautiful there. The gallery is a place to visit. You can see the permanent exhi- exhibits and also the rotating ones right now on display. You can see De Grazia's bus, which is all about um, the bus, the Mexican bus. And uh, that is a recurring series of works by Ted De Grazia that dates from 1944 to 1966. There's also Rodeo. It's a 1954 series of oil paintings inspired by the Tohono O'odham Nation Rodeo and Fair in Sells, Arizona, and also The Way of the Cross. Now, Lance is going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, The Way of the Cross, he gets in trouble if he doesn't put that up every year. So he's he's safe this year. And um, but we're going to talk about the mission. We're going to talk about Father Font. uh, Also, how De Grazia painted uh, the Mission San Xavier. Uh, through the years as well. So welcome back, Tucson Dude. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's spring. is starting to spring out in Tucson, right? You've had some rain. You've had some little snow a little here and there. But um, it sounds like spring is going to be pretty good this year with some wildflowers and the cactus corral blooming at the gallery. You're going to have fun. It seems like it. Maybe maybe another month or two. But, uh, yeah, no, it's starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah, getting ready for summer. Excellent. Well, I I can't wait for anything warm after our stint in the Pacific Northwest in snow and ice. I understand why people go down to Arizona seeking sun. I'm just saying, I get it. I understand. And uh, you know, the winters in in Tucson compared are beautiful. So that's a good thing. Let's talk a little bit about Ted de Grazia uh, in regards to the spiritual side. Do you think a lot of this started when he was a kid? Was he raised Catholic, being in an Italian family in Marenzi, Arizona, where he was from? Where do you think it started? Um, yeah, no, he was he was raised Catholic. Um, his family was from Italy, and uh, you know, obviously, they were Roman Catholics. Um, I think that um, as De Grazia grew up and got a little bit older, he he kind of lost his, um, uh, he didn't really like organized religion. He didn't really like, uh, you know, going to church in that way. So when he had his opportunity, he built his own church. And um, that way he could satisfy his spiritual side, you know, without uh, without actually going uh, to organize religion. Huh. Yeah, you know, he was a rebel. He was a rebel. He he uh, he believed in God, uh, but uh, just didn't want to didn't want to be part of uh, the organized thing. What do you think about when we get into the nuns and the mission in a little bit? But his connection with Father Font was it? Who who's Father, Father Font? Oh, you know, know Father, Father Font. Font okay, is. I know. Okay, you, you're so talking about Father Kino. Or... There's Kino and Font. There's two, and I keep talking about Father Font because I, I Father, have Father... no idea who Father Font is. Okay, so he. Sorry, sorry so, about no, but... that. No, 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 but it does connect back to De Grazia. But I did actually mean Kino. Um, so you're right on that, a hundred percent. You are the Tucson dude, but Father Font um rode with um, De Gra... uh, not De Grazia, um, Juan Batista. Uh, he rode with him on the big expedition that went from Sonora, Mexico. Um, he led, I think it was two to 600 people, 200 people. I think it was, yes, 200 people, just over 200 people. They walked 
uh, a mixed blend of people from Mexico, including Indians, walked all the way to San Francisco. And so when you go to Tumacacari, uh, that mission there, uh, that's what Father Font was part of that. Um, he helped there and then also San Xavier, Mission San Xavier del Bac, which I know that uh, de Grazi is, you know, he painted that a lot as well. And so Kino and Font kind of were in the same footsteps of each other. So that's why I always get them mixed up. But you're really right. It, it's Kino with, with de Grazia, but Father Font was with Juan Batista de Anza. And that is how the, the Presidio was uh, founded in uh, San Francisco. And that's how we actually have San Francisco today. And so he rode all the way. He did go to the Presidio in Tucson. Um, the people followed him and they crossed the river. So the Yuma area, the Colorado, the lower Colorado River, where they caught to call it the Yuma Crossing is where it's the lowest part of the Colorado River, where it was safe for horses and people to walk across. And they walked all the way through Anzabrego Desert, uh, Central California, all the way up to uh, San Francisco. Only one death occurred on this big expedition, and that was a lady giving child, who was in childbirth at San Xavier del Bac at that mission. And she died during childbirth, but not because of the expedition. This expedition is huge. And so part of what, it, that's where there's a crossing in regards to de Grazia's history and also uh, Padre Kino. So you go to Padre Kino. I've done my font. And they actually, there's rumors that the word font comes from, you know, for a font in, in text and, and writing and calligraphy comes from Father Font. But I I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I think the word font comes from before font. You know what I mean? But anyway, you know, so well, that's where the that's font all comes very from. interesting. I'm going to have to Google this guy because in, in all my years, I've never heard that name. Well, because Ever. now, okay, well, well, reading Ted DeGrazia's book. See, I'm so fascinated about I need to get back in our search unit because I have all those books from the gallery. By the way, there's a wonderful store at the gallery where you can get all these books we're going to talk about. But. Ted DeGrazia's relationship with Father Font to me is so fascinating. And, you know, these are all, they're, everybody's crossing on these, 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 these are ancient routes. They're like these royal roads of the Indians and the Spanish. And Ted DeGrazia did, did that. And so I'm very fascinated about his relationship with Father Font because reading his book, it's like he almost, his book about Father Font, it's like he almost put himself in that role, just kind of like sometimes you see, his paintings, you see De Grazia in his paintings. It's, he's kind of cameos himself. And I felt like that book was, it was, he almost wrote it like a short novel about Father Font. It's fascinating to me how his connection to him. And I think it was because Father Font, excuse me, Kino, God, I'm so stuck on Font. But Kino and Font um, were two priests that could connect with the Indians compared to others that didn't and were cruel to the Indians. These two were the two I think were nicer. And I think Kino was maybe better even. And Father Font, not Kino, Father Font is the one who helped Casa Grande, you know, outside Tucson, the actual, you know, that big, the, the great house, the, the ruins there. He was there yeah. with, that's how that got founded is because of them. It's how it became an archaeological site. His writings on that expedition I'm talking about is what helped it actually become one of the very first archaeological saved places in our country was there in Casa Grande. And de Grazia's paintings actually in the museum there at the visitor center. So if you go there, you'll check it out. So I find that fascinating. So it's kind of font and Kino. I'm going to have to look up the years, but um, they were in the same crossing grounds basically in in movement so well uh, yeah i'm gonna have to take your word for it because i'm don't, not familiar that's with scary images. it's scary don't don't it's scary. everybody <laughs> everybody look up juan batista de Anza. it's a national historic trail to this day uh that goes from to macacri really actually from nogales actually one of their encampments is in nogales at the border and there's a group that saved this marshland out there so it goes from Nogales on the border of Mexico, actually goes from Mexico, but um, from the American side, all the way up to San Francisco. And even Amtrak has rangers 
that will get on the Amtrak during uh, certain periods of time, certain, I think it's more like February, March, April, and will tell you the history of Juan Batista de Anza and how he traveled with Father Font um, doing this and 200 people following all the way up to the Presidio. And Nancy and I have actually been to an event at the Presidio with the National Park Service. And Nancy got to grind corn uh, or maize to make tortillas, but they were doing an Afro-Latina um, part of the history because some of the Afro-Latinas or Afro-Mexican, however you want to say it, and yes, this is true, go look at the brochures, go look on mps.gov, um, went up, as were part of that that group of people that went up there. And so it passed right by the gallery, man. They they walked near the the gallery, but that was before the gallery was there. So um, anyway, they did go to San Xavier del Bac. That mission was one of their stops and and resting areas. Because remember, they were on foot. Juan Batista and I think Father Font were on horse. But the rest of the people were on foot. That's pretty crazy, right? You know, when you think about it. Long way to walk. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about his relationship with Father Font. Because... It, it it was he was I almost can't like tell a you hero, anything like, about Father Font. You keep asking I mean, me that. Kino, I mean, don't Kino, know anything Kino. about Kino. Fa- okay, Kino. Come sorry, on, Lisa, sorry. get it together. I'm getting there. Give me another cup of coffee. Uh, okay. No, it is Kino. Okay. It is Kino. So, so what what was your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, tell about us a little Father bit about De, De Grazia and his um, connection to Padre Late. Kino. I'm not going to talk about Font ever okay. again. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, Father Kino uh, was very, when he came here, you know, he was given the task of um, starting missions in southern Arizona and northern Sonora, Mexico. And when he came here, you know, most of the the, um, uh, the Spanish priests came with conquistadors and they came with guns and they said to the to the Indians, you know what, you're going to, you're going to convert or that's going to be it. We're going to kill you. Well, Father Kino wasn't that way. Father Kino was very, very kind to the Indians. He, he brought them things. He brought them cattle. He brought them uh, like food crops. He brought them cotton and they, they loved him. Um, So he wasn't your typical Spanish priest. And uh, the Indians really related to him. And um, again, he loved them and they loved him. So, uh, you know, fast forward about 400 or 500 years. And here you have uh, De Grazia, who is very close with the, with the two tribes in Tucson and basically loved them in the same way these were his uh these were the people that he wanted to be around and the people that he wanted you know his drinking buddies um so hmm. that's how it that's how it started and and he he felt this this kinship with with father kino uh, uh or should i call him father font no kino don't don't that's, don't that's, in, a, don't. that's, that's that's, that was a joke. Don't, don't uh, get, anyway. get me all riled up here. But, okay. <laughs> Kino, Kino no. and De Grazia hung out together. Father Font came after Kino. Just to be clear, there's like uh, a, a, a good difference yeah. of time, 100 years. Fa- uh, De Grazia had never hung out with Father Kino because Father but he Kino liked was him. back in the 15th. He loved him. And, you know, he felt this kinship and painted a series of paintings on, on all the, the, the things and all the good things that Father Kino did uh, for the Tohono O'odham. And, um, and that was the relationship. Um, it was a relationship that was separated by many hundred years, but um, they, uh, De Grazia loved him. And that, I think, it was because of the connection he had with the native peoples right because de grazi was so connected with that and then also you know the catholicism side of it was really interesting you know to me about how he was so connected um with the people like kind he liked kindness and that's what it to me that's what it felt like yeah yeah well he he, de grazi grazi just de grazi loved the tribes here and um 
you know, spent a lot of time on that reservation. He, he had models out there. He had kids that he liked to paint. Um, you know, he just, he knew everybody. They all knew him. And, um, um, this, this is mm. what he, uh, this is what he enjoyed in his life was to spend time with these people rather than that. the elite. Yeah, exactly. It was about being, yeah, one with the people. So did a lot of this kind of love come after his time in Mexico with Diego Rivera and Jose Orozco? Or do you think it was always there and then it just grew over time? His appreciation. Well, I for think him. He, he, even in um, when, when DeGrazi was a young man living in Morenci, uh, he had Indian friends. And mm. so it started it started when he was a kid and mm. and. um um, it, it was just these are the people that he loved and wanted to spend time with, and that's the people that he did spend time with. Wow, it's amazing! So, yeah, the whole story of Father Font, the, the font that I, I'm twirling around with Kino, uh, he that this is a year later, and it was um, 240 people, by the way, that walked friars, soldiers, colonists all walked for a year over um all the way i mean it was a thousand, a thousand i think 1200 miles that they walked and um so this you know where they were walking is where kino was a hundred years before or so so i find that like amazing how this kept going and then san Xavier del Bach, didn't kino hang out there that was part of his area too at times well, or am i getting my times kino, world of- he, he established that mission. See, uh, that was that was a church that he established and built. Um, you know, yeah. using using Indian labor and and whatever they 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 built this church, and um, you know it's still here today. It's known as the White Dove of the Desert. It's mm. just a beautiful, spectacular. Uh, example of, of uh, you know the early uh, Spanish missions, and um, it's you know it's it's kind of a, what do you call it? It's a it's a mainstay of Tucson. It, it's one of the big things that people visit uh, when they come here. You know, besides the Grazia's Gallery, they they come and yeah. visit San uh, San Xavier Mission. Well, the mission was there first, and then the church was like he, Father Aquino, um, established and founded it as a Catholic mission in 1692, and then the church project itself became is it started in 1783 after Father Font and Juan Batista rode through there. So I'm getting our history straight, everybody. I'm 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 I got the iron out, and I'm i you know ironing out my wrinkles of history here. <laughs> this is a good lesson, history lesson. But that it, it's fascinating, you know, when, when you think about how you can still go to these places where, you know, de Grazia appreciated, you know, Kino and going there and you look at that mission. I think it's one of the best preserved Spanish style missions we have in the country or architecture as a whole um, from that era that we have in the country. You know, you, you don't see very many Spanish style in back east, you know, yeah, no, <laughs> you have no, it here. That's because <laughs> It's all in the yeah. southwest, and yeah. uh, you know it's a it's a beautiful place. And just uh, within the last, I want to say ten, ten or twelve years, uh, they've restored it. They've mm-hmm. re- they're always working on it, but they they've restored uh, all and cleaned all of the uh, the artwork inside the church, and um, it's just beautiful. It's just spectacular uh, uh, artwork. It's gorgeous. It is. It is. And so then de Grazi goes, okay, he, he built one gallery and then moved into what is now the gallery and the museum, right? So he had a, mu- a gallery in, in an, another area in Tucson first, right? And then moved. Am I getting that part right? Uh, de Grazi built I'm scared a to say anything gal- now, Lance. <laughs> no, no. He, he built a gallery in the middle of town and um, in the early 40s. And um, toward the toward the end of the 40s, around 1949, the city the city was just surrounding him, and he he didn't want to be in the middle of the city, so he had an opportunity to buy the property uh, up by the mountains, 
um, in he bought it in 1949 and then moved moved his gallery and built that gallery up there. Mm. Um, That's beautiful. So, and the mission yeah, itself. Yeah, that, 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 that. Oh, I'm sorry. The mission. No, as I say, the mission itself is beautiful. I mean, the architecture, I know the paintings, you had that one fire, but you guys managed to restore the mission, you know? Um, it's amazing what it went through. And, and it's also a national landmark itself, right? The gallery itself, the grounds. But this uh, is also Yeah, we're on the National Historic Register. Mm. And so this is dedicated to Our Lady of Guadalupe, right? The, the mission. Yeah, it's in honor of Father Kino and dedicated to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And there's a quote on your website, the mission from De Grazi himself, the mission in the sun is a place for remembering, a place in which to begin to believe. Hmm. So he maybe finds inspiration from religion and spirituality. Because it's, um, it's a leap he, of faith, he, he right? Yeah, yeah, well, he was a believer, you know. He believed uh, he believed in in the the whole thing, and mm-hmm. um, just uh, you know. But it was a personal thing to him, you know. He didn't want to sit in church with a whole bunch of people. He wanted to walk into his own church and light candles and and um, do his own thing and do yeah. his own thing, but also make it available to other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's there's people that frequent that yeah. little mission uh you know 24 hours a day two o'clock in the morning uh you'll have people in there sitting in there uh praying or do whatever they do yeah i mean the other quote you have here is i built the mission for myself i'm not a church going man but i am a religious man and perhaps religious only within me religion to me is right or wrong you do right and you're a religious man it's not Catholic. It's just an old chapel for anyone who wants to go in there, whether Christian or non-Christian. From Ted de Grazia. I love that. Because there is something. Yeah, you do have yeah, a feeling in there, no matter what you believe when you go in there. And I think there's so much energy from people going in there, um, putting photos of loved ones at altar, uh, loved ones who are sick. Um, it's a place for people to have some hope. And that's what I think about the beauty of all of this, no matter what you believe in spiritual, non-spiritual, but it's a place of hope. And that's where, you know, you even let weddings happen there, right? So you yeah, know, pe- when people, people get, get married, married, they have they hope. Have... <laughs> yeah. You need hope, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Well, at least in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he has, he has also that mural of Padre Kino, right? Isn't that him? When you go in on the one wall, there's like a, is that, Padre Kino on horseback, or was that There's, somebody else yeah, that he painted? Yeah, that was that was some of the some of the um, paintings, of the frescoes that were saved uh, oh, from wow. the fire. Yeah, there's Father Kino on a horse, and there's a deer dancer in there, and um, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, all that. All Baby that Guadalupe stuff. angels, angels. You got angels in there. Um, the other right. part is the nuns' quarters. I always bring this up because the nuns, every time I think of nuns, I think of my knuckles being whacked. But um, any of you who went to Catholic school know this. If you, you know, speak out of line, like I would have, like on this podcast with Lance talking about Father Font instead of Kino, Padre Kino, <clears throat> getting them mixed up, my knuckles would have been for the offering of the nuns and they would have whacked them. Because they're like, you know better. You messed up. Whack. You know, sorry, but it happened. <laughs> I went I went to a convent. I know. They they nailed me. But I learned really quickly. <laughs> I really did. But the nuns would come and visit him, right? So, and there's some really um, big history of nuns in Arizona. I mean, they would travel from Yuma to Tucson. I think St. Mary's um, was named after nuns, uh, the hospital. Of after these nuns that did some travel across the desert in a wagon. Go think about this way back when, right? So these, these women were resilient, and it seems to me that he understood that about them and had a place for them. Uh, um, you know, it, it's, I'm not sure. It, 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 I think it's a little simpler than that. De Gra- mm-hmm. The women loved de Grazia whether they were just regular women 
or none. <laughs> they all gravitated to him. They loved him. They thought he was a handsome guy. And um, the sisters used to visit from California, the Benedictine sisters and the Franciscans used to come through Tucson and they would stop. And, and there was a little, just a little, uh, little domicile uh, that he would let them stay in. Uh, and it ended up being you know, eventually called the nun's house because that's where they would stay. And uh, they would all, you know, sign the wall. Uh, the, the priests would come along. They would stay. They would sign the wall. Uh, the door so their signatures and you know uh, uh, autographs wow. of, of all of, of all of the uh the people that came through there over the years wow it's amazing now let's go to the way of the cross exhibit which you learn quickly that you need to do every year apparently if you don't you get in trouble right then when was well, the last time the, you didn't yeah. show it when was the last time uh, you didn't show there's it? there's never that- been We've never not shown it. Uh, De Grazia used to, it was a permanent collection. It was always up. It was always up 365 days a year. Uh, but we have so many, so many paintings and so much art to display that uh, now we took it down and we, we, we put it up now um, just before Lent and it stays up through Easter um, usually a month or two after Easter, so that uh, you know the snowbirds, all the all the visitors from out of town, uh, can see it. Um, a lot of times, people come specifically to see that uh, mm. during this time of year. So yeah, no, I I know better uh, than to not put it up. Yeah, no, no, and and it, it's it's something he would want. And and you say that. No, I know we've talked about this before for for, for new listeners. Um, you say that instead of the traditional 14 stations of the cross, he added a 15th one. He did. Wow. He did. It's, it's, uh, it's a big oil painting of, uh, it's called La Gloria, you know, Jesus, uh, uh like he rising rises. and, uh, he goes yeah. to glory. He goes to glory. And, and then he, he also does. has an audio tape with this. So you can actually hear what the Grazi has to say about all of this. When you go, and, yeah, he narrate he narr- he he narrates it station by station. God, I, you know, I really wish DeGrazi was alive now. I really do. I'd be so fascinated to see what he would do now in this world of documentaries, because he'd made his own documentary about what he does. Right? He kind of had this other thing. That's what I really love about him. He was always pushing forward what was new, what was another way to communicate what his art was, his ideas, keep the Southwest alive. He always was in this period of progression. And today in this world of digital craziness, we have AI. I mean, now even in our magazines, we're putting in like, here's all our experts. They know what they're talking about. This is not AI generated. Like I love podcasts just because you, I made a mistake about Father Font. You know it's not AI, but then if you listen to AI, it'll be full of mistakes. But you know it's a real conversation with people. I'm so I would love to know how he would deal with this now with AI, artificial intelligence, getting into the art world. How he would handle about content creation being a whole new platform, and there's a lot of beauty in it, and a lot of things you can do would be so fascinating because he was so progressive. I think personally that he was a very progressive artist. And at the same time, progressive in that he wanted people to understand real people and not the muckety muck land. You know what I mean? He was a person for the people. Yeah. It would be interesting. I don't know. We're, we're in such a, we're in such a weird time. Uh, I, I have no idea how he would react. Um, I mean, he was old school. He was old world. He was old school. And um, who knows? knows I know. He was old school. Yeah, he was old school, but progressive at the same time. And I think some of his old school values were some of the really good values, you know, of looking at and respecting people for who they are, individuals. 
and the people of the, right. you know, the actual people of the land, salt of the earth would be the word, the term, I think. Um, yeah, it's just, it's fascinating to me. It, there's always good stories with them and you're always teaching us every time you come on the show, Lance, you have a new story. And today you made sure that I did not call Padre Kino, Father Font. So everyone, uh, go look up both of them. They were not that far between each other. Um, pretty much a, just a, around a, just under a decade, 70 years or so, 70, 80 years. But, um, Father Font is fascinating because Padre Kino is kind of who he emulated following forward, um, with what he did traveling the country and going up to the Presidio with, uh, Juan Batista. And he wrote, he documented the Southwest. He was kind of like the following in the footsteps of Kino, you know? So, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't do anything on him, you know, that DeGrazi didn't pick up on him. Maybe yeah, he was just so like, didn't. this is the real, this was the, icon this is who did it everybody else is like following in footsteps i don't need to emulate or work with that you know you were this was well i'm gonna i'm gonna have to go google it i know so that i'm not totally ignorant you're not ignorant dude i'm just i'm the one who got the the two dudes (laughs) mixed up so i went on that but always fun uh everyone degrazia.org is the website to go to um, not only do you have DeGrazia's bus exhibit, The Way of the Cross, and Rodeo on exhibit now, um, and, and Rodeo and DeGrazia's bus is on exhibit until September 4th, and um, The Way of the Cross through spring, but the little yeah, gallery uh, is happening. Go ahead. I, I just want to mention uh, another exhibit that we forgot to talk about is his uh, master's thesis is is also on display right now oh that's uh, right from the university of arizona yeah yeah that is a huge deal and that's where he has that just want to throw that out because that's a really really interesting really interesting series it to me that is one um where he looks at music and color being related and he created a machine we talked about in the last podcast in fact everyone in the show notes I'll link uh, the last podcast about that because it's so fascinating how he relates to art and music are connected. And when you listen to something, what colors are you seeing and paint from there? And he did that with students, you know, with that exhibit, Uh, not just his exhibit, but like as his thesis, he got students to actually paint to music, which is a big deal. What he did. Yeah. So uh, it's it's very interesting. So. Yeah, everyone's there. And then the little gallery is uh, still happening Um, right now. It's on now until April 5th. So the three artists you can see February 25th uh, through March 8th is D. Ruff. March 10th through 22nd is Chip Travers. March 24th through April 5th is Charlie Gaskell. And the little gallery is actually what was his first gallery on the property, right? When he first started building. Yes. So that's the little gallery. And um, through the winter and early spring, that's where you'll find visiting artists. So check that out. But yeah, lots of exhibits going on. And of course, the the um, one with Padre Kino. See, I got the right Padre now. Um, that's on display <laughs> year round for everybody. That's like one of the main exhibits. Yeah, that's so a, that's a permanent. That. Well, Lance, thank you so much. And thank you for keeping history straight. <laughs> thanks lisa so, i appreciate it bye nancy bye you take care everyone degrazia.org thanks for joining us thank you for listening to big blend radio's tales of ted degrazia show this show airs every fourth sunday learn more about degrazia gallery in the sun at degrazia.org follow the show at bigblendradio.com <laughs>